Our story begins a long time ago, 893 AD. An arrogant and youthful Thor celebrates a victory with the local village. But suddenly, a man brings everyone's attention to the river banks. The villagers has discovered a butcher the head of a man who they know is not from their village. With one look, Thor knows that this was the head of a god. Present day, Thor Odinson hears the prayer of a young one from across the cosmos. Their world is dying and in desperate need of water. Thor arrives and cracks the ground till water gushes forth and carves rivers where once was desert. The Avenger from Earth swears by all that is holy. No one dies today. After meat and mead, the village falls asleep. The Odinson asks the village elder, Why is your world dying? Where are your gods? The elder tells Thor that once, when he was a young boy, he had heard of stories and legends of gods on their planet. But that is all it is, stories and legend. Shocked, Thor leaves the planet in search of these gods that abandoned their people in need. It's not long before he finds their cosmic kingdom. But no sign of gods, no sign of life, no sign of anything. The treasure room kept untouched, the weapons vault kept fully stocked. But just before departing, the God of Thunder finds a storage house that bore chains. No other door had chains except for this one. After breaking the chains, Thor discovers the answer to his question, a room full of dead gods. Thor has found the missing gods of Ingidor, an entire pantheon of gods all butchered like animals in their own fortress without any sign of invasion or warfare. Their deaths were skillfully prolonged, their sufferings relished. The Onison remembers that one night, a couple centuries ago when he found the butchered head of a god on the riverbanks. He knows who did this. Suddenly, the guard dog attacks. Thor defends and says, if Gore the God Butcher still lives, more gods are to surely die. Many millennia from now, the Great Hall of Asgard, only one Asgardian left standing. The Allfather Thor is left in prison inside his own kingdom. He vaguely remembers how it all started so long ago with a dead godhead floating by the riverbanks. And again with a little girl's prayer on a world with no gods. He calls for Mjolnir, the Odin sword is drawn. This is how it ends, with blood and thunder, with hammer and sword. With one last stand at the gates of heaven, whatever happens now, whatever fate is his, he knows that King Thor, the last of the Asgardians, faced it like a god. 893 AD, the Baltic Sea, several Viking ships led by the young prince of Asgard prepares to invade the land that one day will be called Russia. Unbeknownst to them, a shadow follows their trail. Three days later, the Vikings land on the river banks. Hungry for death and plunder, the bloodthirsty Vikings ask permission from Thor to attack their rivals. But the young prince says no. He awaits for their god to arrive and make it an epic battle in which songs will be sung one day. The rival god horse flies in, but no god. The Vikings got their wish and attacks the waiting army. Instead. Thor mounts the steed and flies into the skies to investigate. As he goes higher, the Asgardian discovers a second steed with his rider, but the rider is headless. Before Thor could properly react, his steed loses his head. The God Butcher has presented himself at last. Thor falls but lands on and mounts the black steed. The two exchange blows. The God jabs the Butcher's ribcage. He punches the Asgardian off his steed. As the two falls toward Earth, the Butcher stabs Thor through the chest. He states, What are you a god of? Axis and drunkenness and vanity? Or war perhaps? I have killed so many gods of war. Tell me now, Prince Asgard, what was Thor the god of before he dies? Thor whispers, Thunder! A bolt of lightning races through the skies and strikes the Butcher. Thor lays half dead on the snowy field below. Present day, deep space, a world of dead gods. It took hours but the Odinson has finally killed the watchdog. He now flies to the halls of the all-knowing, to omnipotent city, the ultimate capital of the gods and the immortals. Arriving at the nexus of all gods, Thor seeks the counsel of the librarian god. They enter the hall of the lost, a massive collection of all gods who have simply disappeared. So many books on missing gods. Could they all have been murdered by one man? 
Thor begins to track down the last location of these gods around the cosmos. The Oaken King and Queen of the Garden Eternal, gods of the cosmic seasons, lords forested heaven. No one has seen them in 2,000 years. Thor finds them, nailed to the forest they loved. But that wasn't all he found. The war fairies of Wendigore, the nine guardians of the Hornwood. Last seen 1,200 years ago, the sons of Odin does not have time to bury them. Not while he is still out there. And still, Thor is not alone. The coral immortals of Cataract, the last of the Lava Colossi, all gods missing for 500 years, missing no longer. Thor finds god after god dead and rotting, some alone, some in piles so large he can't see them from space. Each book from the Hall of the Lost leads the son of Odin to more carnage, more eyeless attack dogs, but no god butcher. He now finds himself on the galactic frontier, the Asgardian knows his god. Falagar the Behemoth was his name, champion of the Tournament of Immortals for five centuries straight. They say he wrestled black holes for fun. Now, dead for five years, nothing alive here at least. Hours passed and Thor is filled with more rage than ever. He looks into the cosmos and says, God Butcher, can you hear me? You want to kill gods? Well here I stand, the God of Thunder. Come kill Thor if you dare. He screams until his throat is raw, until they hear the rumble of thunder from worlds away. Mjolnir hangs heavy in his hands, but he cannot stop, he will not stop. 893 AD, along the banks of the Neva River, in what will one day be called Russia, the Odinson wakes up from his injuries. His Viking mortals explains how he has been passed asleep for days. A failed attempt to lift him resulted in a tent built around him. It took four men to lift and move his axe for safekeeping. Thor demands for meat and mead, and then his axe. After having his fill, he ventures into the unknown. Hours later, while on his search for answers, Thor is met by Hinkon, the god of the hunt. Maimed and dying, Hinkon tells Thor that he sends a message from the Black Butcher. He awaits for you in his cave along the lakes. Just follow the screams. Present day, the shores of Lake Lagoda, Russia. With Iron Man's assistance, Thor has finally located the cave where he thought he killed Gore the God Butcher in his youth. This place Thor will never forget. This is where the Odinson nearly died at his hands. This is where the God Butcher taught him fear. Mjolnir breaks through a crack in the walls and Thor discovers a mad god tortured to insanity by Gore's depravity. He tells the Odinson that it is all because of him. The Butcher's action are the result of the Thunder God. 893 AD, the young Thor follows the screams of agony and recklessly enters the Butcher's cave. Like moths to a flame, the darkness takes hold. Thor screams for help but to no avail. Hours later, maybe days, or even weeks, Thor wakes up to a very familiar feeling, pain and agony. Face to face with the God Butcher, Thor arrogantly demands to be set free. Gore demands for the whereabouts of Thor's family and the location of Asgard. The Butcher is no novice in the art of pain and agony. He explains how he has tortured many gods. He once tortured a god of torture. After an evening with Gore, the torture god had told him where his children were hiding. Thor resists but is met with more pain and agony. His screams echoed through Midgard. Seventeen days pass and Thor is breaking. The Butcher gives Thor an easy question. He states, is there someone in your family you hate? A parent maybe, or a brother? Suddenly the walls crumble and more Vikings have finally located their god. As they prepare to dine in Valhalla, they blindly attack the Butcher. During the chaos and confusion, Thor is freed. He attacks Gore from behind and takes his arm off. But Gore has one trick left in him. With a blinding flash, Gore retreats and disappears into the shadows. Thor has survived his first encounter with Gore and he wishes to never speak of this ever again. Thousands of years from now, the Allfather Thor engages in battle with the Hounds of the Butcher. Overmatched and overpowered, Thor pushes on against an ocean of Gore's black berserkers. 
His willpower is stronger than what his body is capable of. But the berserkers wash over the Allfather like a roaring wave washing over a viking vessel. As darkness comes over him, as all pain fades, the thunder god feels himself floating and at peace. He floats through the broken shards of the rainbow bridge, past the statues of his fallen family. Thor goes with a happy heart. At long last, he goes to see his family in Valhalla. Thor knows the feeling of deceit. This is not the afterlife. The God Butcher won't even give him this one small victory, will he? Gor won't even let the Thunder God die. Earth, present day, the cave of the Butcher. Thor converses with Shadrach, the God of Wines and Waterfalls. This God explains how Gor killed off his pantheon. The more Shadrach screams, the more it seemed to amuse the Black Butcher. Every day, Shadrach begged for Gore to kill him, but instead, his eyelids were cut off and he was forced to watch his family and friends scream in agony until their last breath. He escaped when Gore was killing a god whom Shadrach has known since childhood. The god of wine and waterfalls knew that Gore would never set foot in this cave again, so he found refuge and safe haven away from the butcher. But Shadrach had enough time to hear the god butcher mention the word Cronus. Together, the reluctant god of waterfalls flies off with Thor to meet with the great librarian in Omnipotence City for answers. Arriving on location, shocked, they discovered a half-dead librarian and his library burning down to ashes and cinders by the Black Berserkers. Thor engages the watchdogs of Gore, but time is running out. The Book of Cronus is burning away. Luckily, Thor read all he needed to. With location in mind, he flies off to Cronus. To the palace of infinity. The librarian demands for the water pixie gods to calm the fires. Shadrach states that he is no help for he is the god of songs and somersaults. The world of Cronus. Gore commands his berserkers to bleed the gods well. He stands in front of a pool of blood collected from every last god of Cronus except one. This one he keeps alive to bring him back in time far back in time. As he enters the blood pool, Gore ventures back 14 billion years and discovers the Elder God, the first ever god of this universe. He sees no grand plan at work, no benevolent omnipotence on display. He sees an inbred offspring of the Elder Gods treating primordial life as his fleshy playing thing. Gore has slain a multitude of gods to stand here at this one genesis of all things. Blackened with vengeance, Gore takes what he came for. Emerging from the bloodbath of thousands of Cronus' gods, Gore has returned with his prize, the heart of an elder god. Suddenly, lightning strikes and Thor makes his presence felt. But the element of surprise has come and gone and thus the Black Berserkers subdue the Odinson. With this opportunity, Gore steps into the bloodbath again but not before telling Thor to stay alive because the Asgardian Thunder God shall be the last god to die by the hands of Gore. With Mjolnir's help, Thor breaks control of his captives and jumps into the Red Pool in pursuit. Thousands of years from now, the great halls of Asgard, the Allfather crawls his way out of the throne room with Mjolnir's help. He engages in another battle with the Black Berserkers in hopes of ending his life. The darkness pierces his stomach, but this won't kill the last god of Asgard. A blinding light erupts in the distance and Thor, God of Thunder, stands prepared for battle. The two Thunder Gods engage the wave of darkness and won. The Berserkers have retreated. The Avenger asks the Allfather for the whereabouts of Gore. He finds out that he did arrive at the right place, but at the wrong time. 900 years has passed since Gore arrived in this time. 3000 years ago, a world without a name. A promise of God's benevolent intervention has soured the young Gor when he lost his mother to hungry predators. Years later, he is now soon to be a father, but food is scarce and he cannot provide for his hungry wife even though she tells him that the gods will provide. This will be the second day that the gods have claimed another life dear to Gor. Months later, the shortage of water claims the life of his son. As he buries his only family left in the world, Gore doesn't even have enough water in him to cry. Angered at the gods, Gore lashes out into the heavens. 
the tribal leader hears of his sacrilege and forcefully removes him from the tribe. Without a home and the support of his tribe, Gor finds a final resting place to die in peace. Suddenly, a meteorite catches his attention. Gor discovers two gods locked in combat, but only one god appears to be dead. The half-dead god requests for aid. This further angers Gore. After the death of the two gods, Gore salvages the armor and weapons and wonders if there are more gods out there. Many centuries later, a weathered and hungry Volsteg is tortured and whipped for stealing a loaf of bread from the kitchens. For 500 years, this Asgardian has nothing to eat but worm droppings and his scab. The Asgardian states, even if you kill all the gods, there will still be one left. You. With these words, the infuriated Gore crucifies Volsteg the Valiant, the Lion of Asgard. 893 AD It has been 8 days ever since the young Thunder God escaped the caves. Gore still haunts his dreams even though the Butcher is believed to be dead. Angered and restless, Thor rushes outside with a thirst for battle. But it doesn't take long before he finds a hound of gore. The fight abruptly stops as a strange entity swallows up the thunder god. Seconds later, Thor is face to face with a black berserker. Gore welcomes Thor to the place where all gods go to die. Hours of torment and torture later, the young Asgardian gets thrown in with the rest of the god slaves. Gore has plans for the god of thunder. After the slaves finish their work, Thor will be the one that drives in the last nail. As a young Thor approaches the epicenter, the production is almost complete. Gore has created and perfected the god-killing machine with the help of a certain god. Gore has created the god bomb. Angered by what he had witnessed, Thor retaliates against his slavers. But the three she-gods demands that he continues his work lifting heavy boulders. Every time Thor retaliates, another friend of the red-headed goddess gets crucified. And so, it was that Thor Odinson of the Viking Age first met the goddesses of thunder from an eon hence, his own future grandchildren. Meanwhile, on the forgotten home of Asgard, the Allfather and the Avenger prepares for battle against the God Butcher. It has been 9 centuries since Gore's endless black berserkers came and blanketed the skies and laid siege to Asgard. The Allfather tells Thor that he has lost everything, forever imprisoned in his home world. But the arrival of his unbearded and dim-witted self has given him strength and vigor. For the first time in centuries, the Thor Force has sparked and the Allfather feels like a god again. For honor and the realm eternal, for vengeance divine, the last sons of Asgard charges to meet Gore the God Butcher in epic battle. Gore's god slaves have worked for days on end without pause or sleep, but every seventh day, they are allowed a few moments rest, and on the seventh day, they rested. This was Gore's idea of a joke. But what the Butcher doesn't know is that the seventh day, for the last 900 years, the Goddesses of Thunder plots to revolt to destroy the God Bomb. But for the gods to live, one god must sacrifice his life and take the unstable matter to use it to destroy the bomb. Thor hears all of this and steals the weapon. He races to his death through rain of fire. Young Thor's mind is empty of all but rage. No thoughts of Asgard or the father's love he would never live long enough to earn. No thoughts of the maidens yet to be wooed. The sagas yet to be written. The god of lightning and thunder reaches deep within him for a godly strength and throws the unstable matter at Gore's god bomb. The shock is felt across the cosmos and reaches the Allfather and the Avenger. They move carefully from here on out across a trail of mutilated god parts. Moments later, young Thor boards the Allfather's vessel. Fully armored and bloodthirsty, the past, present, and future Thors are ready for war. Entering Gore's world, the three heroes are met with the Black Butcher himself. The foolish and brave Thor jumps first into battle, then struck the Thors with the fury of a billion storms. The skies exploded with lightning and black gore. Thunder echoed through the depths of space. Thunder and the pounding of hammers. King Thor strikes with his Thor Force. Such was the awesome fight of an Allfather unleashed that for the first time in a millennia, the Butcher of God knows fear. The true history of Gore's weapon has been lost in time, though there were many stories and legends. Some say that the blade was forged by the Elder Gods, used during the time of creation to carve existence from the unbreakable stone of nothingness. 
Others said that it was the darkness of all the gods, given form, and whoever wielded it was merely an empty vessel for its murderous will. Its new master calls upon it once again to murder the slave gods. The god screams echo through the cosmos and reaches the Avenger. As Mjolnir flew, Thor strained to hold fast. Asteroids shatter in his wake. He knows he must not stop, no matter what he saw. With every swing of his hammer, the Avenger felt his bones rattle. His fingers crack, his muscles tear. And yet he swung again, even stronger than before. Again and again he swung. With every cut, he felt Thor's weapon creep inside of him. But Thor made his mind as strong as Uru in his hammer, and he thundered on. He ignores the pain, the roars of his own screams, the shattering of the worlds around him. Thor focuses only on bludgeoning and ignored everything else. In the great black emptiness of space, King Thor thunders through to aid his younger selves and finally have vengeance for his fallen family. In the planet below, a young Thor had a hammer in his hands and a Viking's cry for battle upon his lips. Beneath rage, he was smiling. Never had he charged into battle with such fear and anger. He races towards glory and battle eternal. Thor the Avenger fought with the spirit of a multitude. Thor the holy hero, champion of the cosmos. Thor the hammer of the heavens. The three Thors, the greatest of all the gods, stands in front of the greatest foe that they have ever faced. Past, present, and future converge upon their target. On the world of Gore, thunder is heard and then it began to rain. It rained blood, god blood. Then it rained hammers, and Thor's, and despair. Later, all thunder went silent. Across the skies of creation, King Thor, nailed to a comet, is sent roaring through space. Below, as the ground opened like a giant maw, Thor the Avenger fell. Mjolnir laid encased in a cage of god flesh, unable to fly to their master's hand. And young Thor found himself too spent to even muscle a curse. And the countdown began. The Butcher of Gods is halted by his overjoyed wife. She tells him how happy she is that his goals have finally fruitioned. She tells him that he is her star, he is her savior, he is her god. Gore feels the blackness in his heart fizzle out of him and he ends her life for her poor choice of words. Moments later, the boy discovers the body of his mother. Gore continues to drag the Prince of Asgard to the bomb. This creation is imbued with the heart of an elder god and infused with blood from the Time Lords of Cronus. Once triggered, it will explode through time, killing every god who ever lived or will. Meanwhile, underneath the earth, the Avenger struggles with his remaining strength to hold on for dear life. He discovers the weapon of the gods left here for safekeeping away from their owners. As he slips and falls, the sun reaches out to save his life. The boy tells Thor that his father had killed his mother. Gore has grown to become someone whom he despises. His father is dead and this black berserker must be stopped. The rumble of thunder sets free the millionaires. The Avenger frees himself from the underground and the All-Father returns from the void. Young Thor rebels and removes the eye of his captors. They converge upon the Butcher of Gods. They swing their hammer with all of their might. But it is too late. The bomb explodes and ripples through time and space and gods feel the full wrath of Gore's creation. All through time, gods were dying. Every god who ever had been born or will be, they merely fell to their knees, choking on blackness, their flesh falling apart before their eyes. Some knew why it was happening, most did not. But they all shared one common vision. A vision of one god with a mighty hammer in each hand, fighting at the heart of a bomb to save them all. And for a moment that stretched across time, every god in the universe closes their eyes and prayed for the thunder god, Thor. Inside of the god bomb, time became tar. Eternity echoed with the wailing and gnashing of teeth with the dying of the gods. If he had been a lesser god, Thor might have accepted that Gore had won. But this was no lesser god, this was the god of the roaring storms, and even if he had been the last god left on the entire universe, he still would have been god enough. With the two hammers in hand, Thor absorbs the god bomb into himself and thus, all went silent. The dust cloud settles and Gore remains alive, but without his black weapon. The black avenger emerges from the dust with the necron sword absorbed into his body. Channeled through Mjolnir, he takes Gore to his knees. Young Thor seizes the opportunity to swing the last blow and decapitates the Butcher of Gods, thus ending his murderous career. The Black Avenger falls to his knees. The Necron Sword must be purged from his body. But it is too late. Thor, the Avenger, Earth's mightiest hero, died that day. 
Three days later, Asgard of the future, the Avenger rose from death. King Thor had purged the Necro Sword from the Avenger and left it on the God Bomb world. He hid it inside of a black hole so no one can ever wield that weapon ever again. The God Slayers had found a new home on Asgard. Those who wished to return home found safe passage courtesy of King Thor, but many have forgotten their home or how to be a god. They can heal in the halls of Asgard if they choose. But the Allfather will find worlds that are in need of gods for them to inhabit if and when they are ready. And so, old King Thor, with his Allfather powers, sent the other Thors back to their time. They knew that given the nature of the time travel involved, their memories of recent events would begin to fade. There were memories that they looked forward to forgetting, but others they would hope to cling on to forever. The Thors would not remember meeting themselves, and chances were that they would never meet again in such a way. Instead, they returned to their separate worlds and lives. Young Thor would return to being the brash little godling that he is, still trying to lift Mjolnir. The Odinson returns back to present day to rejoin the Avengers and prepare for an unknown future, a future without his hammer. And King Thor would face the return of Galactus and eventually rebuild his garden he calls Earth. Their own ambitions, their own fears, their own callings, and also their one common destiny, to be the greatest Thor who ever lived. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island! My name is Joey and you have just watched my all-time favorite Thor story arc. Most wouldn't even know who this God Butcher is and I hope he comes back because Gore has such a huge impact on the Odinson and I would want to see him again. So it is no surprise that I highly recommend you check out this story for yourself. You can find it in Jason Aaron's Thor God of Thunder issues 1 to 11. So I hope you enjoyed our Thor God Butcher complete story. Thank you so much for watching and you can also find more complete story on our channel and website. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and I'll see you next time in another complete story video.